Okay, good afternoon. Uh, today I'm going to go ahead and give you a demonstration of how we move this trailer up this driveway. The driveway I think is about a four to six degree incline. Um, it's going to go here and it's going to go toward the backyard. Uh, so we're going to show you how we're going to go about doing that. Um, first things first, you know, we put on the trailer wheel. We bought this from Croft Trailer Supply. It does not come with a kit. It's very important that you have to buy one. Um, they don't tell you this at Purple Line when you buy that trailer mover, but if you need it, there it is. And it just attaches uh, like any other accessory of wood. And that's one side of the trailer mover. There's the other side of the trailer mover, and it just engages by using this wrench. And we're going to stick it in the socket here. We're going to turn it, and it'll engage. It's engaged. Uh, let's see. And I'm going to go ahead and disengage it just to show you. It disengages. And the next part of the video is just going to be us moving it, so uh, bear with us. It's going to take a while. Thanks.
right, so here's part three of the video where I'm going to talk about how I went about installing the Purple Line Trailer Mover on the GeoPro 16 BHS. And I'm sure your installation will be very similar. Um, might be easier, might be harder. In my case, it might be a little more difficult than most. And that's partly because um, I had to relocate the black uh, tank dump. And the black tank dump was right exactly where you see the motor. Um, I had to go and move it uh, left a little bit. I don't know if you can see that there, but there's a black tank and I had to put a new elbow in there, a 90 degree to come out a little bit and come a little ways away from the uh, motor because uh, again it's set right here. And the only things I had to do was um, had to cut the existing pipe um, from the black tank uh, and then also buy another um, there's a connector that goes from uh, where you see that clamp uh, there's a connector that goes in there but in this case I ditched that connector and I put in a street uh, 90 degree elbow uh, which is smooth on one end and has a flange on the other side and then just built a little extension to move um, the pipe over a little bit and then put another elbow in and you know just to use the um, adhesive for a P what is this um, ABS pipe and everything stuck together pretty good and you know it looks fairly OEM I would say you know and uh, one thing I did have to do was there was a um, one of these heated mats that goes on the pipe uh, I went on Amazon and bought a bigger one to go on that extension that's there um, I guess we'll see at some point if we ever go in freezing temperatures whether that worked or not I mean I know it does heat up but uh, since this extension here isn't heated I'm not sure if that would produce enough heat to be able to stop this from freezing uh, because obviously there's going to be um, black tank contents um, beyond that mat over here uh, hopefully it won't freeze but I guess we'll see and again, just to go back on the uh, installation of this, um, it did require me to put some holes in the chassis or in the frame. Um, you can see there's three bolts that hold up this bracket. Um, so the first thing you would do when you're installing this is you would install, put those three holes in, uh, install this bracket. It's like a big L, basically. And then the motor is attached by using this kind of clamp thing that goes on here and it has a U channel there and the motor is kind of like on a its own bracket that has it's like a big square piece of tubing that goes into another big square piece of tubing you just kind of slide it in and this is what basically holds everything up um, so again first three holes in my case I could have done a few more but three was enough um, then you clamp that on by tightening all these bolts and then you slide this in. Um, the purple line instructions are fairly decent I and mean, you can kind of get an idea of what you need to do by reading those. Um, in my case though it was a little weird because um, my uh, frame doesn't fit the profile that purple line um, uh, outlines in the in their manual they I they either give instructions for a box frame or for an eye channel frame and this one's kind of a, like an S so it goes um, it's not quite a box frame it goes uh, up it goes up out down and it does the same thing on the other side so it's like a big S and um, I just follow the instructions for the box frame even though it wasn't quite exact uh, Purple Line didn't, you know, I asked them and they were not sure what to tell me about it. So I just kind of went ahead and followed the, the um, box frame instructions. And I deviated a little bit from their instructions to make it work on my uh, trailer, but it works pretty well. And as you saw in the previous part of the video, I mean, it, it does its job. It, it gets the trailer up. My only issue is that sometimes these wheels lose traction when the um, device is hooked up. And I think that might be because I need to adjust it tighter. Um, you can see that um, 
you know, it, it's engaged fairly well there, but it should be warping the tire a little bit when I put it on, and it's not. Um, when you install this or in the installation kit, there's like a little piece of like um, a square tubing or a square um, pipe that they give you to kind of wedge up here and uh, just to act as a spacer so that you know that you're spacing this correctly. Uh, in my case, it, it went on, uh, the spacer was right, but you know, it, it's still not tight enough. You can see in the previous video that sometimes the this loses traction with the tire. It could also just be that the tire has a big, fat, aggressive tread. Um, maybe it's not creating enough surface area uh, for the uh, teeth here to engage, or maybe these teeth should have little nibs on them. I'm not sure, but um, you know, it works. Sometimes I have to give it a little help, you know, just to kind of get the traction going, but it works pretty good. As you saw, it's remote controlled, um, so you don't have to be in the bite while you're pushing it around. And again, going back to the installation, um, you see these wires here. Uh, Purple Line gives you this uh, uh, corrugated conduit to run all your wires. And basically, I ran them. Uh, we'll go on the other side of the trailer just to check it out. But I ran them on that side of the trailer, and then ran them up behind this water tank, and uh, just ran them inside and then there's a control module that goes inside that also has uh, an antenna and we're going to go ahead and see that in a second and here's the other side of the trailer and you know i just try to make the wires as neat as possible so i ran it here and under this channel and just followed another um bolt of wire that was there already and here it goes and I went ahead and made a hole down there you can see the foam trying to seal that uh, up a little bit and it goes up into the trailer underneath the dinette in my case um, so definitely you have to remember from installing this there's a module that has to go inside the trailer you don't want it to get wet and here we are and there's the uh, control module there and you can see my wires. I, I kind of fished them through a hole that was already here. Just pushed them in through here. Again with the split um, conduit. And just made all my connections here. Again, uh, Purple Line's pretty good at giving instructions and telling you where all the connections need to be. So I just bolted it up to um, you know the existing framing and the dinette. And you know it's pretty sturdy. Just be careful this case is aluminum and these wires are have power you don't want them grounding out to the case um, don't ask me how i know um, and that's pretty much it uh, so if you have any questions you can leave them in the comment section and i'll try to get to them uh, you know thanks a lot for watching